So my septic contractor showed up with their trencher machine and little backhoe and unfortunately we're not going to be able to put the septic in today. We Hi, this is Kamachori coming to you from Linden Camp, located five minutes southeast of Linden, Tennessee. In this video, we're gonna finish up our excavation series. It was a four week series, so this is week four of four. The first three weeks are linked down below and you can watch those. And those involved a different contractor that we use to uh, make driveways, build pads, and do some land clearing, some dirt work, and this contractor is going to be doing some land clearing as well. Same kind of thing, but a little bit different. We've we've tweaked what we want. So in the first three weeks, we actually burned the trees, and I heard from a lot of you in the comments. I actually do read the comments that um, I, there was maybe a you know a better a better purpose for the trees. So. Um, in this week four, I decided to, um, instead of burning the trees, to keep them here and pile them up as, in logs. So there's probably a probably hundred or so logs here that we decided to keep rather than burn them. But, you know, we'll probably turn them into firewood and burn them anyway. So, I don't know, kind of the same thing, really. But at least we're not just burning them unnecessarily in a pile for no one to enjoy. At least if we make campfire wood, we'll be able to get some good exercise splitting all the wood and then somebody will be able to enjoy it. I also had them do a couple other things while they were out here. Make me a path down into the hollers so I could drive my truck down there and build a build pad for a bathhouse and um, shower facility if I so chose to build one down the road. I say it's a, kind of a crossover video because it has both septic and clearing in it. So we're going to focus more on the, the clearing part of a septic system in this video. And I'm going to do another video on septic systems in general. This has been a long time coming. I've been working at getting a septic system in here for 10 months. It's October as I'm recording this footage. I started the process back in January. And this video is going to primarily cover the part uh, April, June, July time frame, other than the narration stuff that I'm recording after the fact. Wow. <laughs> Ten months. You know, I sit here and I wonder why is it taking so long? And I started going back through time and just trying to figure out you know what happened when and like you know, all the events that led up to this and i know that if i was confused and have to do that on paper i know that that you were confused uh, probably even more so so i decided to just you know put together a brief timeline of of this year as it pertains to septic and land clearing and you know i'm not documenting everything that i did you know, went to the bathroom, ate dinner, that kind of stuff. But just from a real high level of what the last 10 months have en encompassed. So here we are in January. And the first thing I discovered is it hasn't been 10 months. It's only been nine months. Not that it really matters because as you just saw the septic permit, um, I actually got that at the end of January when I was traveling between um, the, the Gulf of Mexico and Wisconsin for Christmas, stopped in at the land, did some surveying, applied for the septic permit, and that was issued towards the end of January. We've already talked about that. So that takes us to, I'm gonna combine February, March, and April here. So February and March, it was cold in Linden, it was below freezing. They had some snow for a week, it melted quick, but it's still snow, it was cold. So I stayed down in the south where it was warm. I actually returned to the land on April 1st to finish developing it or resume developing it as, as you will. And the first things that um, really happened were, were um, three weeks of land clearing, which we've already talked about. They're linked down below. 
you know, week one, week two, and week three are all listed below. And so you can you can watch those. And then that takes us up to uh, mistake number one. All right, I've tried to record this section like at least 20 times now, and it just becomes way too long. And you guys will probably get bored out of your gorge. So I'm going to try to give a, a shortened version. I'm probably going to talk kind of fast. But anyway, I got a septic permit issued in January. It's here on the screen. My driveway is towards the bottom of my buildings. The old logging road is up to the left. And if we zoom in here, you can see where the state inspector drew the septic tank and the field lines are the dotted lines that go up and down. So that was issued in January. Come April, I had the land cleared and I decided to change what I was doing as f with regard to the driveways rather than a horseshoe driveway. I decided just to keep the driveway going straight to the turnaround and you can see the obvious problem here is we ended up paving over, if you will, with gravel the original location of the septic system, the septic tank, and the first few fill lines, completely invalidating the the permit. So I didn't really know exactly how that was going to be handled in, in the future. I just kind of kicked the can down the road with that one, built my driveways the way I wanted. And you can see in this video here, I'm standing at the new turnaround, which I just love. I'm looking down the driveway here where that dump truck is is about where the septic tank was supposed to go and now he's dumping a big load of chert on it so that's kind of the mistake or the the you know the, the I guess the foundation of, of what went wrong with this mistake so how could I have done things differently that's that's a good one I struggle with that a lot you know land developers will tell you to get your septic permit first the problem with that and I'm and that's probably good advice for you know smaller lots you know a half acre an acre because you you know you have really limited um, land to work with in my case I have 35 acres now what I should have done is when I was contemplating extending the driveway across the septic area I probably should have paused and called the state inspector back out and say, hey, you know, this is what I'm thinking about doing. I know that this is what was on my permit. I, wa I now want to extend this driveway straight back. You know, would it be okay if we, if we move the tank and move the field lines? And he probably would have said yes because, you know, spoiler alert, I ended up having him come back out in September when it was time to actually put the septic system in and, and he, you know, he okayed everything. So my septic contractor showed up with their trencher machine and little backhoe and unfortunately we're not going to be able to put the septic in today because uh, we have some large trees that are just too big for the equipment behind me to handle. So we're going to have to go another route. There was a miscommunication. He expected me to have these trees cleared behind me, and I expected that the septic installer would, would clear the, the trees and prep the land. Maybe maybe that's just a bad misconception on my part where I made some, uh, some assumptions I shouldn't have, or maybe this is just a smaller septic installer that came out here today and just doesn't have the equipment like a larger, a larger vendor would have. So, I'm going to look for a tree service to see if I can find a guy to come out here and, and cut these trees down behind me, delimb them, run the branches through a wood chipper, and then at least you know stack the logs on top of each other somewhere around here in the property for later processing into firewood. So that's my plan and I'm sticking to it this time. So yeah, had to pivot had to reassess the situation. As you saw there, I was gonna get a tree service in here and process the trees into logs. I, I tried to do that. I, I called up uh, some local tree services and had them come out. And um, what I discovered is that a tree service 
doesn't really do excavation work. I mean, it kind of makes common sense. I mean, I should have known, but you know, I wanted to save the logs, figured they could chainsaw them down and stack them for me. But it just would have been, you know, too expensive for, for that type of service. A tree service is typically um, someone you'd call, you know, if you need a, a tree or two taken down in your yard, not a hundred trees taken down in a septic area. So one of the tree guys I had out here um, actually brought another guy out who he referred me to, which happened to be an excavator. Surprise, surprise. So I ended up uh, talking to the excavator at the end of April and talked about the project. So I ended up hiring that excavator. He was uh, busy until the end of May, Memorial Day weekend time frame. So we scheduled him to uh, come back and do the land clearing in May. So let's talk about May. May started out with the local utility company coming out here and we talked about the project. The long and short of it is, is that um, we ended up deciding to put a temporary RV pole by the road. So I had somewhere to plug my RV in and I'd worry about energizing the rest of the property later. So decided to do that. He marked where the RV pole was gonna go. He left, I went into the electric company the next day, uh, paid for the service, set it all up, paid for the pole. I think it was, I don't know, like $600 or something like that, plus a $200 security deposit. So I did that just as I was heading out of town. So I don't, I don't get invited to too many weddings anymore. That's more of a young, a young person's kind of thing. But I just so happened to have two back-to-back -back weddings in the first part of May. And I'm in, now, now, now get this, I'm in Tennessee in the middle of the country. My first wedding is down in Gulf Shores, Alabama, along, along the Gulf of Mexico for some dear friends of mine. So I left my RV here in Tennessee, scooted down to, to Gulf Shores, attended the wedding. There's Tom and Troy on vacation at a beachside wedding. About to happen, a couple of my friends getting married down here in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Shortly after that wedding was done, my son was getting married the next weekend up in Wisconsin. So I had to leave Gulf Shores, hurry back to uh, Linden Camp, pick up my RV, and head up to Wisconsin for his wedding. Before we go on to June, I just wanna just ask you to like, subscribe, comment if you're enjoying my content. That's what keeps us going. And I just, I really appreciate it. And with that, let's get on to June. So now we're in June. I'm supposed to meet the land clearing contractor in Linden. This is shortly after Memorial Day weekend. I think it was maybe June 3rd or 4th or something like that. And I get in my RV in Wisconsin and I head to Linden camp. Well, halfway down, I start getting uh, lights in my RV and I had some coolant problems. I said, check coolant level, check coolant level, check coolant level. I pulled into a gas station, added some more coolant. Sure enough, it was low. I'd go another you know, 20 miles and then all of a sudden I get coolant level low again. It's like, oh no, it's something more than just low low coolant. I, I have more of a major issue going on here. So I ended up pulling off to the side of the road for the night, doing some investigations and realized I had a, I had a failing cool line. Stranded me there in Effingham for a couple days. I ended up repairing the part myself. So I did finally get the RV repaired in the first part of June and I headed down to Linden Camp. It was a scorcher. I remember it well. It was like 100 degrees, 101. As soon as I got down here, I, I contracted my electrician or I contacted my electrician. And I'm like, dude, you know, I'm burning through gallons and gallons of five and a half dollar diesel just to keep cool here. You know, can you come out here as soon as possible to, you know, get my, get my electrical RV pole energized and hooked up. So he finally came out and, you know, put the meter base in and 
the breaker box, the RV stuff, and I think that was June, June 11th he did all that, and I had it inspected on a day or two later on June 13th, I think it was, and then the electric company came out and energized it on June 14th. I was so excited to finally have electricity. Now I'm going to be making a separate video for the, the RV, the temporary RV pole that I had installed. And maybe by the time you're watching it, I've already done that. You know, check down in the description to see if it's, if it's down there. While I was down here in June, I met with the, uh, the building contractor and went over the build plans, made some revisions to it and ended up uh, heading back up to Wisconsin towards the end of June. So now we're in July and I come back down to Wisconsin and finally I'm going to get the land cleared for, you know, for the septic system and hopefully get the septic guy right behind him to put in the septic system. So that's what, you know, the majority of the next part of the video is, is the actual land clearing part and let's, uh, let's see how that went. As you can see here in this diagram below me, at the bottom is where um, the septic field lines are going to go. That's for the first part. Um, up towards the top is a path that I had made down into the hollers for a rustic campsite. And then a third part, which you don't really see in this diagram, is a, um, a build pad for, for um, a bathhouse restroom kind of an area. Well, the first part of the equipment has arrived for removal of the sept removal of the trees of the septic area. They're unloading it right now, and uh, I think they're going to probably start tomorrow on it. And they're just kind of getting their equipment staged today. And there, there it goes. Hi, this is Comet Troy. I'm on site here at Linden Camp. The land was cleared in April for driveways and whatnot. Now we're doing some clearing for a septic system. I got contractors here on site uh, preparing the, the location. Now I gave these guys, I met with them this morning and yesterday we've been in uh, you know, talks over the last few weeks and I basically gave them you know, four objectives. Number one, clear the septic area so we can put field lines in. Number two, instead of burning the trees, let's, let's stack them up into logs so I can repurpose them later. And then number three was, you know, while you're back there, you know, digging out trees, why don't you just carry on and make me a path down to the bottom of the holler. And then the fourth objective was uh, what to do with the stumps. So. We're going to, you know, dig a, I guess a shallow grave or a hole or whatever, and we're going to bury the stumps, you know, back on that path that we're doing in objective number three. So work is underway. You can see a bunch of trees have already been pulled out. The track hoe is, is busy behind me here somewhere. And the owner of the company is actually back there running the chainsaw, making the logs. How exciting. All right, so that's some pretty exciting stuff. We're gonna go up to the eye in the sky and look down 
at the excavation that's going on from above. As you can see here, this is about uh, halfway in. The excavator is still has to widen this some more yet and go deeper. Here's another shot from coming in from the west, I guess it is, an overhead view. And then this is a real high level view. The, the septic area is a cleared area on the right, about halfway up the driveway. And then here is the, the cleared area that's already done. It's about 80 feet wide and about 100 feet deep. And of course the icing on the cake is I have this big stack of logs, actually three stacks. I estimate about probably about 100 logs or so. So I'm pretty happy about that. When you clear land for a septic field area, it has to be undisturbed land. So you can't be moving dirt around and digging holes and all sorts of things. So the best way really to clear land was is to uh, leave the stumps in the ground, but get rid of the trees either with a chainsaw or mulch them from the top down. And then the septic installer will, you know, will remove any stumps that are in their way and leave the ones that aren't in their way in the septic field for the maximum amount of, you know, undisturbed land. I didn't do that. Um, so, but I, I still, I still passed. I actually had the stumps pulled out. I had the whole trees pulled out with an excavator. And so there was some holes left behind where the stumps were. And I told the, the sept or the land clearer not to disturb the land, you know, don't be pushing any dirt around. And I guess, you know, how the state can tell is, you know, when they have the trenches dug, you know, for their, for their field lines, if you, you know, they'll see roots and stuff, you know, root masses sticking out near the topsoil, you know, into the trench. So if there's, if there's, if there isn't any of those root structures, they're going to, they're going to know that it's disturbed land. I think it's better to uh, leave the stumps in the ground for the septic field line and just cut the trees off at, at the bottom, whether it's with a chainsaw or a forestry mulcher. Behind me, you'll see the, the build pad that we created for the bathhouse. And it turned out really nice. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. So I think that when you do a project like this, you gotta have some, some fun stuff, some personal stuff that just some pet projects, whatever you wanna call them. So I actually had the guys create a path in the hollers here and you see that in the drone footage it's kind of a game of where's waldo there's actually a a uh, forty five thousand pound track hoe in the middle of the hollers there taking trees out making a path i had to turn up the drone iso real high here so you could actually see the track hoe which kind of washes the trees out a little bit but then here's the septic area and then we're back down to the track hoe so we sent the track hoe down first to clear out the big trees of the path. And then after the track hoe did his job of, you know, pulling the trees out and, and taking care of that, then we sent down a uh, forestry mulcher on a skid steer. And the forestry mulcher went down to um, take out the, you know, the smaller brush around the outside of the, of the camp. Here it is. Now that whirl you hear is the head slowly spinning up. It's very heavy. I'm kind of hiding here back behind trees. I don't want to get hit by flying debris, which, you know, just wait and watch this. If you've never seen 
forestry mulching before. It's quite interesting. It's also very dusty down there, as you can tell. The spinning roller at the end actually has carbide teeth on it, so it literally shreds the tree in place, as you can see here. And then we're going to show another one here, then we're going to move on. They basically cut the tree in the middle with the carbide drum. The top falls down, they kind of move it out of the way and then just come down on top of the rest of the trunk and just shred it. Now here we are after the path was done this again is a uh, drone footage starting down at the rustic camp area. There's a giant tree right there in the middle of the screen that towers over all of them. That goes down into the middle of the camp area. And then we're going to follow the path back up to the top through the new septic area. The path is a little bit hard to see here, but it's in the middle. Again, it's a game of Where's Waldo? If you're looking at your cell phone, it's probably a little hard to see. If you're on a big screen TV, it might be a little bit easier. It's the best I could I could show here, um, you know, with the you know with the drone high up, you know, overlooking the path. It might be easier in the fall once the trees are gone. Now we're going to switch over to some dash cam footage. This is actually the first run that Penelope and I took with the truck on the new rustic cart path. I was a little concerned about getting stuck. I set some cameras up and. And I had my excavators on standby in case I needed to, to get towed out. Hi, this is Kama Troy of Linden Camp. And here we are pulling into Linden Camp, five minutes southeast of Linden, Tennessee, 35 acres. I'm developing into an RV park and, and um, just has some some uh, land clearing done to make room for the septic system. So we're going to go in and, and uh, check that out. Let me get my windshield wipers here so we get some of the dirt off of the window. So here's where the uh, septic area was cleared. And then while the guys were out here clearing it, I'm like, you know what? Can you make me a path down to the hollers? So we're going to try that path out right now. So right now we're on where the field lines are going to be, and then this here takes us down to, oh, there goes my windshield wipers. This path here takes us down to the, what I'm calling a rustic campsite, or rustic, yeah, I guess it'd be a, not an RV site, there's no way you get an RV down here. So people that want a complete off-the-grid camping experience, it's pretty steep, so I think you probably need a four-wheel drive to get out of here or get pulled out by one so here's the the campsite got some sun kind of coming in there and right here's the bottom of the holler where the the holler where there's uh, some water sometimes it's not a it's not a big stream Ooh, it's dusty down here though. We really haven't had a rain in a while. So I got my motorcycle in the back for extra weight. Let's see if we can get up here without uh, four wheel drive. Well, we're starting to spin here a little bit. Yeah, we're going to need four-wheel drive. That motorcycle is just not heavy enough. Okay, now we're in 4x4 four four mode. A little dusty. Whoa! Oh, 
Okay, now we're in 4x4 mode. Crawling right out of here. I actually have limited slip differential in the rear, and, and so this truck gets pretty good traction. Just regular street tires, no special knobs or anything. So here we are coming back out to the, the septic field. How exciting is that? And one of the things I had the guys do when they were um, plucking the trees out was to cut the tops off, cut the root balls off, and stack the logs for me. So that's what you see here. So I might use those to build a woodshed, or if not, it'll make, it'll make good firewood. It's pine, so it burns. Burnt will make nice campfires once it dries out. And here's the turnaround. So let's go down the, the RV sites. RV site 9, RV site 7, RV site 5, which is for a smaller camping unit. Then here's 3 on the right for a larger unit, a deluxe site, and then here's site number 1. I've heard from my female subscribers that they would like to see more of my dog Penelope. So after we were all done clearing the land and the path was all done, the contractors were gone, uh, Penelope and I went for a walk. And one thing about Penelope is sand and dirt to her is like catnip is to a cat. It just makes her go spastic. Now, this isn't extreme. This is probably on a scale of 1 to 10 of Penelope and sand and dirt of probably a 4. But I thought it was an appropriate video because it's... It's in the, you know, it's oh God, on topic for the septic dust. area and the area that we cleared. So here it is. Oh, you want a treat? Is that what you want? Do you think Daddy has treats? So this is the path down to the bottom of the hollers. Looks like Wild E.I. Coyote or the Roadrunner or something with the dust behind them. So there's my rustic pad down there. So yeah, so yay, finally got a bunch of work done. Uh, week week four of the excavation series has uh, completed successfully. I'm real happy with the result. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the septic installer back here uh, in July before I had to go back up to Wisconsin yet again for another trip. So back up to Wisconsin to, uh, to do some more um, family and friend stuff. And while I'm up in Wisconsin, guess what? <laughs> I got... I got COVID for probably well, at least for the second time, maybe even third or fourth. Who knows how many times I've had COVID, but uh, always happens when you're on vacation. So I hope you enjoyed the video.